sin, there's no God like Jehovah. 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 Nobody like it. Nobody like it. Nobody like it.
What a wonderful blessing to be with you, all my friends down in downtown Christian Center. Ah, so wonderful to be able to share God's word with you. I greet you in the powerful and wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And uh, thank you to Pastor Maureen and Rocco for inviting me to share a word with you. And uh, I just have such good and fond memories of our visit to your beautiful city uh, some time ago. So it's so good for me to be with you again. So I want to share a word with you about when fear and courage clash. When there's a clash between fear and courage. I start off by reading Psalm 112 verse 6 and 7. It says, Those who are righteous will be long remembered. They do not fear bad news. They confidently trust the Lord to care for them. So those who are righteous do not fear bad news. And you know, we're all facing coronavirus or COVID-19 at this time in the history of the world. And it will be recorded. And sometime in the future, future generations, should the Lord tarry, will look back and they will remark about this COVID-19 coronavirus uh, that hit South Africa and the world and brought the whole world to a standstill. It's almost like the story of David and Goliath. You know, it's still remembered and still told. It's recorded. Uh, it's in the history books. It's remembered by us as generations so far removed from the actual story of David and Goliath. And just as we are facing COVID-19, so there's the story of David and Goliath about fear and courage. You know, uh, because fear has the potential to cause us to only see in the natural, whereas courage connects us to the authority of the word of God. So we have faith, we have courage in God, in the word, and there is COVID-19, coronavirus, the fear and fear mongering that has grabbed the world and maybe even grabbed you and you are fearful today and you are afraid of what is going on around us. Um, we are people of faith. Amen. We are people of faith. And you are a person of faith and we are going to trust God today for victory in Jesus mighty name. In 1 Samuel 17 verse 3 and 4, the Bible says that the Philistines and the Israelites faced each other on opposite hills and there was a valley in between. Then their champion Goliath, who was a Philistine from Gath, he came out of the Philistine ranks to face the forces of Israel. And he was over nine feet tall. That's what the Bible says. Nine feet tall. That's, that's a huge man. That's a very, very tall man. A very, very large man. And you see, fear has the ability to influence our destiny. And fear has become a very socially accepted sin in our modern society. We know about adultery and about uh, uh, fornication and uh, addictions and stuff like that, that we regard as sin. But fear has become a socially acceptable sin in our modern society. And I just want to say that all our destinies are intertwined with each other. Your destiny is intertwined with my destiny and my destiny is intertwined with your destiny. And so we all have an impact on each other's lives. And if I don't do what I have to do, then you can't do what you have to do. Isn't that so? So fear has the ability to influence our destiny in a negative way. Whereas courage has the ability to cause us to face danger without fear. I'm encouraging you today. We can face COVID-19 without fear. 
Do you know that of the approximate one and a half million people that left Egypt under the guidance and the leadership of Moses, of those only two people entered the promised land? And that was not as a result of God's word being a false word. It was as a result of the people who lacked the courage to see the promised land and to believe that God wanted to give them that promised land. They got themselves into fear and they never had the courage to believe. In 1 Samuel 17 verse 4 to 9, we see how the story unfolds. We've got Israel on the one hill and we've got the Philistines on the other hill and there's a valley in between. Then Goliath steps forward. He's the Philistine champion. 1 Samuel 17 verse 4 to 9 and says he came out of the ranks to face the forces of Israel. Gives his description what he wore and this bronze thing that he wore over his chest. That alone was 56 kilograms. That's like a pocket of cement, the weight of a pocket of cement. That's, that's this, the weight that Goliath could just walk around with and carry. That's how strong he was. That's how powerful he was. And he had a bronze on his legs and javelin was made of bronze and his spear was very heavy. And, and he was really, the Bible says his armor bearer even walked ahead of him to carry his shield. And then Goliath stood there and he started shouting a taunt across to the Israelites. And he says, why are you all coming out to fight? He called. He says, I am the Philistine champion, but you are only the servants of Saul. Choose one man to come out down here and fight with me. Just choose one man. And then if he kills me, we will be your slaves. But if I kill him, then you will be our slaves. Now, isn't that what we are facing right now, child of God? Isn't coronavirus a champion of the world system shouting out at us, I will kill you and you will be my slave. And maybe you're in fear today and you're enslaved by the fear of coronavirus. And God is saying that he did not give us fear. He did not give us fear. He's given us a spirit of power, a spirit of love and a spirit of a sound mind. He did not give us a spirit of fear. That's 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. So here we have the story. Isn't it amazing? One man's victory becomes a corporate blessing for all. When one gets the victory, then there's a corporate blessing blessing for the rest and you know none of us like following losers we all like to follow someone who's had a personal victory because their personal victory becomes a corporate covering for us and no one can be a public or a corporate covering until they have had a personal victory in further on in 1 Samuel uh, 17 verse 22 the Bible says in the lead up to this, that Jesse, David's father, gave him food to take to his brothers who were at war. And when David got there, David went straight to the baggage keeper. In verse 22 of 1 Samuel 17, it says, David left his baggage in the hand of the keeper of the baggage, and he ran to the army and came and saluted his brothers. David took his baggage, took the food, took whatever he had. He took that and he left it with the baggage keeper and he picked up his anointing of courage. And that's where I want to get to you today is God is saying to you that you need to leave your baggage behind and pick up your anointing of courage today. Amen. God is speaking to somebody. Yes, I know God is speaking to you there, right there where you are sitting and watching this broadcast. God is saying to you, you've got too much baggage. You need to leave your baggage with the baggage keeper and pick up your anointing of courage today because that's who you are in Christ. You are more than a conqueror in the Lord Jesus Christ. Strangely, Seven chapters earlier in 1 Samuel 10, the same verse 22. So we have 1 Samuel 10 verse 22, 1 Samuel 17 verse 22. In, in, in Saul's case, Samuel had already anointed 
Saul to be king over Israel. And when he got the nation together to do the public uh, uh, ordination, Saul was hiding in the baggage. Uh, can you see the, 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 the contrast here? David left his baggage with the baggage keeper, picked up his anointing of courage. Saul was hiding in the baggage of fear. See, 1 Samuel 10, says, So they inquired again of the Lord, Is there a man still to come? And the Lord said, Behold, he has hidden himself among the, ba the baggage. He's hidden himself among the baggage. David left his baggage with a baggage keeper, picked up his anointing of courage, and Saul was hiding in the baggage. That's the contrast between the two. You see, Saul was anointed from a flask by Samuel the prophet, and David was anointed from a horn by the same prophet, Samuel. So one had a flask anointing and the other one had a horn anointing. And what anointing do you have? You see, the difference between the flask and the horn is that a horn is from a dead animal. And the anointing flowed out of the horn onto David. And we need to get to that point right now, today. I'm urging you, I'm urging you by the power of the word of God. We need to get to that point place where we die to ourselves so that the anointing of God can flow from us. We don't want a flask anointing. We want a horn anointing that out of the death, out of us dying to self, life by the power of the Holy Spirit can rise up in us and we can live the life and the anointing that God has given to us. I'm saying to you today that before you can slay the giant of coronavirus, you need to leave your baggage with a baggage keeper. You might be wanting to slay a giant right now. I don't know what your giant is that you're, you're, you're dragging along. You know, they've made it so easy today. If you've traveled before, you know, suitcases today have wheels on. <laughs> That's to make it easy to carry your baggage along. And you know what? Many, many people that I see, they carry all their troubles in their baggage on wheels so it's easy to drag along instead of leaving their baggage with a baggage keeper so what is the giant you're facing today what is the giant you are dragging along is it resentment is it regret is it disillusionment is it failure is it sickness is it is it torment is it disease is it COVID-19 I don't know but I'm here to tell you today you, you, you know, get the wheels off and leave your baggage with a baggage keeper. How are you going to slay a giant if you're dragging your baggage along all the time with you? And many Christians struggle to get victory because they are so connected to their baggage. In other words, I'm referring the baggage is their past. You talk to Christians, they will always tell you about this that happened to them and that that happened to them. And they've never been said, you know, they still got this issue of their past. I tell you what, the devil is not worried about your past. He is terrified of your future. Amen. But you worry about your past. And God is saying, leave your baggage with a baggage keeper. The devil is not worried about your past. Come on, child of God, you've got to be with me on this. He's not worried about your past, but he's terrified of your future because our future and our destiny is in the hands of God. Release your past. And maybe there's a champion standing there in the valley and, 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 and bellowing out at you. COVID-19, we're in lockdown how many days now? Way over a hundred days already. We're in lockdown. There's people that have had no work. They've had no pay. The, the, the education system was locked down for so long and still hasn't gained its momentum. People don't have food. And people, you know, there's silence. There's fear. There's sickness. There's disease. All connected around COVID-19. Even lockdown. What about the giant of inferiority? Maybe your giant is inferiority. You know, you grew up on the wrong side of town. You were born on the wrong side of town. And you have an inferiority complex. It's a giant. 
And you need to leave the baggage with the baggage keeper because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Amen. What about the champion of poverty? You know, what, you know I wanted to say something to you here. Poverty does not equal stupidity. A lot of people that I come across, they equate poverty to stupidity. Please, if, if, you, if, you, if your giant is poverty, may God break that yoke. May you, leave that, may you leave that baggage with the baggage keeper in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and rise up. May God give you strategy. May God give you wisdom. May God give you the ability to accumulate wealth and break the yoke of poverty in the mighty name of Jesus. Maybe your champion that you are facing is apprehension. You, you, you're afraid to get into a relationship. You're afraid to do what, what is biblically correct. You're afraid to do what, 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 is, what is ordained and anointed by God. Maybe somebody touched you inappropriately. Maybe somebody violated you. Maybe, maybe they, did, they did stuff to you and they had no right to do that. And you're afraid, you're fearful, you can't step forward. You, you, you're continuously hiding in the baggage. And God says, take up your anointing of courage today, child of God, and let go of the past so that you can become a champion of the future. What about rejection? Maybe your champion that's bellowing out at you is rejection. You were rejected by somebody, rejected from your parents, rejected by a, a friend, rejected by a partner. I, whatever form of rejection you've, you've had to subject yourself to, I'm urging you today by the word of the Lord, leave it with the baggage keeper. Amen. Amen. And rise up in the power of the name of Jesus so that you can be free today and you can slay that giant. You can slay that champion that is shouting out at you all the time. Maybe it's alcohol. Maybe it's drugs. Maybe it's substances. You know, this list can go on and on and on and on. But I think you get the point. The point is... Let's get to that. Like David, he came to the battleground. He left his baggage with the baggage keeper and he picked up his anointing of courage and he went to see where his brothers were. And in 1 Samuel 17 verse 26, David said to the men who stood by him, he said, what is going to be done for the person who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? And he said, because he, this is an uncircumcised Philistine. He's an uncircumcised. He's got no covenant. There's no covenant between this giant Philistine uncircumcised and, and God. And he said, who is he that he should defy the armies of God? He's uncircumcised. And David knew the power of his covenant. That's why he could pick up his anointing of courage and face the giant. Because he was fully persuaded that he could overcome this giant because of the power of the covenant that he has with God. And you know, before you can engage in a giant, you know, you normally get criticism from your own household. You want to step out and take a giant, but your family say, no, you can't. Who are you? Like David's brothers. They said, what's wrong with you, little boy? Why don't you go home? Why don't you go and look after the little sheep that you, 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 you know, you're supposed to be looking after? You see, no big brother wants his little kid brother to come along and whip a giant. <laughs> Amen. And today is the day. I am urging you, let the little kid brother in you rise up and take down the giant in the mighty name of Jesus. And so they brought David to Saul, who was the king. And, you know, Saul wanted to give him his, all his uh, 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 military uniform. You see, you don't need other people's anointing. You don't need other people's coverings. You don't need other people's uh, information. You don't need other people's weaponry. You don't need other people's clothing or armor. Because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. God has called you and you have an anointing to do what God has called you to do. And so 1 Samuel 17 verse 34 to 36 David said, you know what? He said this to the king. He said, I look after sheep. 
When a lion comes or a bear comes to take one of the lambs, you know what? I go after it and I, 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 I tackle it, whether it's a lion or a bear, and I remove the lamb out of its mouth. And so, and if it gives me any, 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 any nonsense or lip, then I kill it. So David went to rescue the lambs and he knew what his anointing was. And he, he said to the king, I've killed lions and I've killed bears. And so who is this uncircumcised Philistine that, that, that he should come and defy the armies of God? You see, before you can have a public victory, you have to have a private victory. David had private victories. He knew, I've killed a lion, I've killed, I've killed lions and I've killed bears. I've saved lambs. And this is an uncircumcised Philistine. I know my confidence. I know my courage. I know my covenant with God. David had this thing for sure in his heart and in his mind is that he knew the power of his covenant with God. You know, we live in, we, 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 we live in times where our communities are are ravaged by stuff that happens. Our communities are ravaged by stuff that happens. I'm urging you today, rise up in the name of Jesus. Rise up in the name of Jesus. You see, it seems to me you get two types of people. You get people who do things, and then you get people who criticize those who do things. I don't know which category you fall into. Do you do things or do you criticize people who do things? Like David's brothers, David's brother, Eliab, his eldest brother said, what, what's wrong with you? What are you trying to prove here? You know, so I want to say to you, if you've never killed a giant before, then please be quiet. Shush. Don't criticize those who end up doing things for the sake of the kingdom of God. I'm urging you to step forward. And do something like David did. Step into the realm of your anointing and do something for God. And you know what the king said to him when David said, listen, I've done all these things. I know what it's about. I can't do this. I can't wear your uniform. I know. I'll just take my, 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 my staff. I'll take my sling and I'll go and pick up a couple of stones and I'll face this giant. And you know what the king said to him? All right, go ahead and may the Lord be with you. By those famous words, I've heard those words said before. You know what that normally means? It normally means, bye-bye, you're on your own now. <laughs> you know, May the Lord be with you. Yes, the Lord is with me. The Lord is with you in the mighty name of Jesus. He is your shield and your buckler. You can go through the valley of the shadow of death and you will fear no evil because the Lord is with you. And David went towards the giant. In verse 45 to 47, 1 Samuel 17, and he says, You come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Coronavirus has come. It comes with fear and torment. It's like a spear and a javelin. And it says, I'm going to get you. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to take you out. But we are going to rise up today, child of God. In the name of the Lord, we're going to come against COVID-19. We're going to come against coronavirus in the name of the Lord. And we're not going to allow fear to take a hold in our lives. And David says to him, today the Lord will conquer you. You see, he didn't say, I'm going to take you out. I'm the great guy. I've done all these things. He said, no, 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 no. He said, the Lord, the Lord is going to conquer you. And then I'm going to kill you. You see, the Lord will conquer coronavirus through our prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will conquer coronavirus. He has already done that. Jesus did that on Calvary. He did that when he took stripes upon his back. He did that so that you and I can be healed. He's already paid the price. He's already conquered fear and death and hell and the grave because he's got all those keys. And he's got the keys of coronavirus. He's got it. He's got it. All we need to do is stand up in victory in the mighty name of Jesus. And he said, today I'm going to kill you. I'm going to take your head off.
David knew his covenant with God. We need to know and understand our covenant with God through the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. His precious blood that was shed for us. You see, God never measures our performance. Not how long you prayed. Not how many hours you did this. Not how long you did that. Not how great you are. No, God connects himself to the beloved of God that believe in the covenant of God. So God connects himself to a believer who believes in the covenant. You know, it doesn't matter. Yes, prayer is important. Reading the Bible is important. Fellowship is important. These things are all critical. But your God doesn't measure your performance before he reacts to what you're asking him. God connects to his covenant. That's where he connects. And the Bible says here, 1 Samuel 17 verse 48, Goliath came forward against David. And the Bible says David ran quickly to meet him. He ran out quickly to meet him. See, when the anointing comes upon you, you need to act immediately. Because if David stopped to think about what he was doing, <laughs> maybe he would have changed his mind. See, procrastination is the assassination of your revelation. I will repeat that. Procrastination is the assassination of your revelation. David did not have a match against Goliath. Goliath was nine feet tall. David was a teenager. In relation to size, there was no match there. David did not worry about whether he could compete against Goliath or try to copy him. He connected himself to his covenant with God. Amen. David knew who he was because of the power of the covenant that he had with God. And you and I need to know who we are because of our covenant that we have with God through our beloved Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have to match up to the enemy. You don't have to copy what the enemy does. You just need to know who you are and the power of the covenant that you have with Almighty God. So I close by saying, Courage refuses to give up. Long after everybody's gone home, courage still holds on. It does not give up. Courage utters a clear call to do what is right. Remember, I said we are talking about when fear and courage have a clash. Fear has to surrender to the courage of the believer who believes in the faith of the word of God. When other voices overpower courage, it makes one more determined to stand up. Fear says, dim the lights. It's all over. It's all finished. Courage says, no, th no, 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 no. Let's rise and shine here. Do not let successful people's appearance intimidate you. You see, we, we estimate other people higher than ourselves because they seem to be more successful than us or more influential than us. And then that becomes an intimidation. It's like another giant you have to face. Don't let other people who are successful in your estimation, let their appearance intimidate you. You need to rise. David didn't look at the size. He didn't look at the armor. He didn't look at anything. David knew the power of his covenant. He knew who he was. Don't let COVID-19 intimidate you. Don't let fear intimidate you. And finally, let us learn to celebrate other people's successes. Amen. And may God bless you. May God keep you. May God let his face shine upon you in this dark time of COVID-19. And I'm just going to pray with you now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you give people courage today in the midst of fear, in the midst of coronavirus, in the midst of COVID-19. Many people are afraid and they are fearful. But I speak the word of courage today through prayer that faith will arise in Jesus' name. 
because you did not give us a spirit of fear, Lord, but you have given us a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of a sound mind. And we garrison our thoughts and we bring our thoughts captive to the obedience of the knowledge of the Word of God so that our thoughts will be surrendered to the power of the Word in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. And God bless you abundantly. Thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to be with you. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Awesome, 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 awesome.